Doing a PhD in the US is more like you're going into a relationship with your advisor for throughout the duration of your PhD. So you do not want to be in a toxic relationship, right? <music> Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Jane and in today's video, I'm going to be talking to graduate students, whether you're a master's student or you're a PhD student, whether you are a potential student or you are a new PhD student or you're already in grad school, but you are in the process of deciding which advisor to work with, then this video is definitely for you. So in this video, I'm going to be telling you the questions that you need to ask your potential advisor. Now, one thing that people don't know is that before you get into grad school, most times the only thing you think about is the research you want to do. Oh, I'm going to pick this advisor because he does this type of research that interests me. He does this type of research that aligns with my future goal and most times that is the only reason why we decide to work with an advisor but when you get into grad school you will realize that this is a, a hard truth that i'm telling you when you get into grad school you realize that the re the relationship that you have with your advisor is much 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 more important than the type of research that you'll be doing with the advisor so it's good for you to have a very good relationship with your advisor that is the only way not the only way but that is one of the major thing that will help you succeed in grad school whether as a phd or as a master's student but most especially as a phd student so in this video i'm going to be telling you the questions that you need to ask your potential advisor before you add this before you decide to work with him or her so the number one question you need to ask him or her okay for easy flow, I'm going to be referring to the advisor as a he because I can't be saying he, her every time. So I'm just going to stick with he. So the number one question that you should ask your, this person is, does he have funding that can sustain you throughout the duration of your PhD? This is a very important question. Does he have funding that can sustain you throughout the duration of your PhD? Because I've seen some people they will start your PhD and then at some point the advisor will be like, oh, there is no funding anymore. They couldn't get the funding that they wanted. I've actually heard that before. They couldn't get the funding that they wanted. So because of that, they can no longer continue to fund them as a PhD student. So when you, before you decide to work with any person, any advisor, ask him, does he have funding that can sustain you throughout the duration of your PhD? This is really important. The number two question that you need to ask is, what kind of advisor is he? Is he a hands-on advisor or a hands-off advisor? Let me quickly explain the two. A hands-on advisor is an advisor that is, that is always there for you. He meets with you maybe once a week, twice a week, every day, once in two weeks, depending on the arrangements that you both have. He's always there when you need him. If you have questions, he's there to reply you. He comes into the lab. He, he actually puts his hand to the work. He comes into the lab. He helps you do one or two things or he shows you how to do something. He's just always there to guide you like to guide you through the process while a hands-off advisor is one that doesn't even have your time he takes you into his lab and then he, he shows you the lab and he lets you go so go do your research i am your advisor i manage you just go in there and do your phd now there is no better way um i wouldn't tell you that being a hands-on is better than being a hands-off or hands-off is better none of them is the best they are both good they are both bad depending on your personality so if you are someone if you're a student that you know that you would like your advisor to always be there with you to guide you through the process then you need a hands-on advisor but if you're the type that you like to do things by yourself just let me do stuff with myself i will get the result to you i'll get the paper published and stuff like that then a hands-off is best for you so you need to ask this for this advisor what kind of this professor what kind of advisor he is whether he's a hands-on or a hands-off advisor that will help you that will guide you on choosing the one that you know is best for you the next question you need to ask um this your advisor not advisor your potential advisor the next question you need to ask your potential advisor is does he have plans to leave the school in the nearest future 
does he have plans of leaving the school in the nearest future? I've seen a case where a student started working with an advisor and the in his first, I think it was second or third year, the advisor had to leave. I think I've actually seen two students like that. They had to leave. So when a student finds themselves in this situation, it's always difficult. The, those, um, the school will try to bring, the department will try to give them options. Sometimes the advisor, if they are moving from that school to another school, they might be lucky. You, They will tell you to follow them along to the other school. Or uh, What if they are moving from the school to industry or a different place where they cannot take you? You'll be left, uh, you'll be left alone in the school. And if it happens to be that he was the only one doing the type of research that you've been working on in that school. That means no other professor can even advise you because they can't like, continue from where you stop. It's either you have to start all over again by changing research area or you have to go to another school. So please make sure to ask your potential advisor if he has plans of leaving the school, of leaving your school in the nearest future. Another question that you need to ask your potential PhD advisor is, does he allow his students go for internship? Some students are okay with not going for internship. They just want to do research and research and research. That fine. Why some, they want to have the opportunity to go for internship every once, at least once in a year or once in two years throughout the duration of your PhD. So if you find yourself to be someone who really want to have an internship experience while doing your PhD, make sure to ask your advisor if he allows his students go for internship because some advisors do not permit it. Why some will allow it, some will not allow it. Some that allow it, they'll only allow it if it's like a, you're going to like a research lab and the work you'll be doing is more like a continuation of what you were doing in his lab or is related. But if it's just to leave you to go out there in the industry to make money for four months of your summer internship, some advisors do not allow it. So it's good for you to ask them from the very beginning if they allow their student to go for internship so you will know where you stand another question that you need to ask your potential um advisor is what is the duration of his students of what is the phd duration of his current student or his past students because if for instance you are in the united states like i am your phd is supposed to last for five years or six years at most depending on some department but you get to find some students spending seven years eight years in their phd sometimes it's not because of them sometimes it might be because of them sometimes it might be as a result of the advisor relationship or whatever but you need to know this from the very beginning this particular question if you're not comfortable asking the advisor the professor you can ask the current student or the alumni or you can go to you can go to the website, the professor's website, try to find out what time the, the past alumni joined and what time did they leave. For you to know, you can use their publication. When did you start seeing their publication and when did you stop seeing it? Something like that. Or maybe message, message them on LinkedIn or search them and probably you will see their profile on LinkedIn and you know how, how much time they spent um in their, during their phd that will help you know the duration they spend so this is really important so that you would know not if you have plans of spending just four years or five years in your phd and then you find yourself in a lab where student hardly graduates they graduate in like seven eight years or six years then that's not going to be fun and also if you are someone that you like to take your time you would want to take your time through the phd process completely within five years or within six years and then you find yourself in a lab where the professor expects you to graduate within three and a half years because i just heard from a friend that in his lab the um, average graduation um, duration of their phd is three and a half years so if you're someone that you want to take your time to do this phd and then you find yourself in such lab where you are expected to graduate within three and a half years that might not work well for you that might not sit well with you so make Make sure you uh, find these things out before you decide to work with any advisor okay i've given you like five i think it's like five or six questions that you need to ask and one of the advice i would like to give is that when you're asking these questions don't ask them via email email because when you ask via email it's not everything that can they can tell you but some of this question you need to sit with them look them in the face and let them answer this question from the expression in their face it can even help you better to um 
to make a better um, decision on who you decide to work with. Remember, the relationship we you have with your advisor as a PhD student is one of the most important thing during the course of your PhD. So do not rush into accepting to work with any advisor or probably because nobody, it looks like no one else is going to accept you. So you're just going to go with whoever um, accepts you. At the long run, you might regret that decision. Mind you, I'm giving you this advice based on personal experience. I've had to work with two different advisors. And also, I know a lot of friends that have had to change their advisors. Some even went as far as changing their school because of a very bad relationship um, or situationship <laughs> between them and their um, PhD advisor. So please take your time, make sure you ask those questions before you commit yourself because doing a phd mind you i am in the united states of america right so whatever i'm saying i'm most likely referring to the u.s so doing a phd in the u.s is more like you're going into a relationship with your advisor for throughout the duration of your phd so you do not want to be in a toxic relationship right you um the phd itself is already stressful it's already like stressful right so you don't want somebody else adding more to the stress that you already going through so please make sure to ask those questions before you decide who to work with and who not to work with i hope you enjoyed this video this it was quick i guess i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope that it i really do hope that it helped you to make your decision on who to work with as your phd advisor and or even as your master's um advisor i wish you all the best in your grad studies and please check out my last video and the next video the next video is going to be kind of related to this video so please make sure you check it out and thank you for watching and also if um you've not subscribed please don't forget to click the subscribe button and turn on the notification so that you get notified each time i post a new video once again thank you so much for watching my video and i'll see you in the next video bye